The next two scheduling algorithms I'll discuss are shortest process next and shortest remaining time. These two scheduling algorithms favor short processes. The only difference between them is that one is preemptive and the other is not. So a preemptive scheduling algorithm is one that will kick a process off of the processor in the middle of executing in favor of another. We already saw this with the round robin scheduling algorithm. In contrast, first come first serve is not preemptive. So of these two, shortest process next is the non-preemptive algorithm. This means that shortest process next simply runs whichever process has the shortest service time at the time when it makes decisions. Now when does it make decisions? It makes decisions whenever the currently running process finishes. So at the start, there are no processes running and only A is in the system, so process A is the one that will run for its full six time units. Now note that process B showed up here, and C showed up here, and D showed up here. This doesn't affect shortest process next because shortest process next is non-preemptive. Now that A is finished, we see which of the remaining processes has the shortest service time. B is the shortest and it goes next. Now the only processes left are C and D, whose service times are 7 and 4 respectively, and since 4 is smaller, D will run next. At this point the only process left is C, so now it will run for its 7 time units. Although this approach favors short processes, it is not very responsive, because if some process is running, and then a short, very important process enters the system, it will still have to wait for the currently running process to finish before it even has a chance to run. So shortest remaining time remedies this issue by being preemptive. This means that whenever a new process shows up, the algorithm will reassess which process should be running. If the newly arrived process has a shorter time to run, than whatever is currently running, it can interrupt it. The result is as follows. So A will still have to start at time zero because it's the only process in the system. But then when process B shows up at time one, we have to reassess which process has the shortest remaining time left. So after running for one unit, A has five units left to run, whereas the newly arrived B only has three units to run. So B will finish sooner, so we actually switch over to B and run that process. Now when process C shows up at time 3, we also reassess which process should be running, but because C has an overall service time of 7, and B at this point only has one unit of time left to run, it gets to keep running, at which point D shows up. So at this point, B is finished, C has 7 units to run, D has 4 units to run, and A has 5 units to run. Remember it's only used 1 of its 6. So D actually has the shortest remaining time at this point and will get to run. Now that D is finished, we can go back and see which should be running now. So C still requires 7 units to run, whereas A has only 5 left so A finally gets to finish. And at this point the only process left in the system is C which runs for its full seven units. Both of these algorithms require the scheduler to know or at least have an estimate of what the service time of the process will be because these values are directly used in determining which process gets to run next. Now a problem with both of these approaches is that they are prone to starvation. If a very large process wants to run, in this example C, it will have to wait until all the short processes finish. In this case, we did eventually get to a point where C was the only process left. But what if processes with run times less than seven had kept showing up in the system? They would keep jumping in line in front of C and C would never get to run. That's starvation. So an approach that solves this 
is the highest response ratio next algorithm. Highest response ratio next is a non preemptive algorithm that is similar to these two but avoids starvation. HRN works using this formula to determine which process should run next. In other words, whichever process maximizes this quantity is the one that will be chosen to run to completion before the next process is chosen. So wait time is the amount of time that the process has been in the system without running. So it's the current time minus the arrival time. And service time is simply the value shown in the column there. In order to illustrate something interesting about the behavior of this algorithm, I'm going to change the arrival time of process D in this table here. Instead of arriving at time 4, I'm going to make it arrive at time 8. The rest will be the same, and here's the result. At time 0, A is the only process in the system, and because HRRN is non-preemptive, A simply gets to run for its full 6 units. But at this point, a decision has to be made, and so things get interesting here. It is currently time 6, and process B and C have arrived. So what is the value of this quantity for those processes? So at time 6, B has been waiting for 5 units because B's arrival time is 1, and so 6 minus 1 is 5. Its service time is 3, so this quantity is 2 and 2 thirds. We'll do the same calculation for C. C arrived at time 3, so 6 minus 3 is 3. Wait, its service time is 7. And D has not arrived yet, so between these two, B is clearly the maximum, so B gets to run next. And because HRRN is non preemptive, B will run for its full three time units. At this point, we have to make another decision about which process will run, because at time 8, is when D arrived. We're currently at time 9 and we have to decide whether D or C gets to run next. So we'll carry out the same calculation we did here but for those two processes. By time 9 process C has been waiting for 6 time units. 9 minus 3 is 6 plus the service time divided by the service time 1 and 6 sevenths. Process D just arrived at time 8, so 9 minus 8 is 1, plus a service time of 4, equals 1 and 1 fourth. Now, 6 sevenths is greater than 1 fourth, so C actually gets to run next. Now this is interesting in contrast to SPN and SRT, because C has a long service time. But, because it had been waiting for a long time, it actually gets to run before D, which has a relatively shorter service time, followed by D, the only process left. 